home for River Dragons Hockey in Noonan 99 Rock. Hey there folks, looking for a top expert in medical, health, and life insurance? Look no further than CP Financial. Meet Charmaine Preston, your trusted agent for finding the perfect plan to fit your budget. She works with multiple companies ensuring the best option just for you. Don't miss out on the chance to make the right choice for your financial future. 706-525-5931. Speak to Charmaine Preston, CP Financial, your top local sale agent. Wishbone Fried Chicken is back in a brand new location. 31 Jackson Street, Sweet A here in Noonan. Same great taste. The best chicken around. Fish dinners. Open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's Wishbone Fried Chicken right next door to their former location, bringing you the best chicken around. So great. Wishbone Fried Chicken, 31 Jackson Street, Sweet A, here in Noonan. Hank Arnold here from Cowie the Force. Cowie the Force is Noonan's own addiction recovery support center. We exist to provide recovery support services for individuals and family members who have been impacted by addiction. Our services are no cost, and all of our information is available on our website at www.cowitaforce.org or follow us on Facebook. You're walking, shopping, or on your favorite trail. You get that feeling somebody's coming up on you. What do you do to be prepared in today's world? Hi, I'm Holly Reese. I'm the founder of Warrior Defenders. As a certified tactical self-defense instructor, I'm specializing in women's self-defense. All women of all ages have the ability to learn how to defend themselves effectively. With technical drills to build their survival skills, you can be your own hero. Classes and private seminars are available. Learn today to have a safer tomorrow. WarriorDefenders.com This is Ian White of the Columbus River Dragons, your home for River Dragons hockey in Noonan 99 Rock. for you to be listening in today uh, so that we can talk about the top 10 safety mistakes that people make. And in today's society, um, there's a lot of things on social media and things that people think they're doing right and some things that probably they're not doing perfectly. So I want to address these top 10 mistakes so we can be safer tomorrow. And you can find all this information about my classes and self-defense at warriordefenders.com. So a lot of people are like, well, what kind of mistakes am I making? There are 10 different things we're going to talk about today and how you, what you can do to protect yourself and the safety tools that you can layer along with your knowledge of self-defense to be able to be safer today. Number one thing that we know is not setting a verbal boundary or feeling embarrassed about screaming or being loud. A lot of times, especially women, uh, don't want to think that they're being paranoid and they don't want to say something to make them feel embarrassed. They don't want to ask for help being escorted out, but your voice can startle an assailant. It draws attention to the bad guy, which they do not want. It ensures that you're breathing and not holding your breath. Helps you to maintain a grounded emotional presence. And we talk about this a lot in my self-defense classes. This is something that is not really addressed a lot, is when you are in a panic and stressed mode, your brain needs to be able to work through that stress to be effective to, to be able to get away. So we definitely need to remain grounded and your voice will increase your adrenaline and gives you your speed and strength to get away. Your adrenaline doesn't last very long, so that's why we talk about ending a fight in five seconds or less, because after a whole minute, your body is going to be exhausted. Adrenaline takes a lot out of you. It can give you a lot of power and strength, but you want to make sure 
that you get away as soon as you can. But when you're screaming at an attacker, don't hurt me, don't yell, you know, that's what they're going to say. The attacker's going to say, don't say anything, I'll hurt you. Don't do something like that, you'll get me in trouble, is what they're thinking. So the assailant does not want to be caught, and that's why they're telling you to be quiet. You want to use direct commands, no, stop, I don't want to go, let me go, don't touch me, back off, leave me alone. And those are things that you need to say with force, not quietly, with force. You're not begging, you are demanding that you get away. Keep Number two, this is a big one, especially you ladies. Keep your personal protection at the bottom of your purse is what you're doing. And half the time, you're not going to be able to get to it. You don't want to go and say, hold on, bad guy, I have to get my pepper spray out of the bottom of my purse. Those self-defense items need to be in hand with you the whole time. So you want to make sure that you have those available. And and we're going to talk about around your home as well so that you can get to it. Did you know that every 68 seconds in America there is a sexual assault? And this is Sexual Assault Awareness Month in April. So tune in with me on Friday, and we're going to be talking about that as well on the Ryan O'Neill Penitentiary Morning Show on WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key. Stay tuned for that one. Every 30 seconds, there's another person that becomes a victim of human trafficking. This is a big one because we don't know what's happening to those people who are disappearing and never being found again. And every 40 seconds, a child goes missing. And that is astronomical, scary numbers and statistics. And did you know that it takes three to four seconds to deploy a pepper spray? A lot of you ladies carry a pepper spray. But did you know that's how long it takes your body to realize that you need to deploy it? That is imperative why you have to have it in your hands at all times. And also, did you know that pepper spray has an expiration date? So make sure that you're keeping your pepper spray expirations up to date. What goes bad in a pepper spray is the expellent that expels it. And the ones that I have on my website on warriordefenders.com can shoot up to 16 feet And they will stay in the attacker with a UV that will not be able to be washed off between three to four days. Though they can't say it wasn't them. And believe me, it hurts. How long would it take you to find your pepper spray in the bottom of your bag? You need to have it in your hands to spray to get away. Number three of the top ten mistakes that we're making is not layering your protection. Now, what do I mean by that? Layering your protection means we cannot rely on just one form of self-defense tool when we are walking around in public because you need to make sure that you have the right defense item for the right circumstance. Layering allows you to have a plan A, B, or C. Layering allows you to have a tool with multiple situations. For example, on a windy day like we have today, you would not want to spray a pepper spray in the air, and you don't want to spray a pepper spray inside your vehicle, so you definitely want to have a stun device or striking tool layered with you to be able to be confident and prepared in any circumstances. So what do we mean by a bundle of a self-defense tools and a lot of you might say well I have a firearm but you need to layer it and on my YouTube channel at Warrior Defenders we have an interview there with a retired female police officer who talks about how important it is to layer your protection I definitely recommend you go and watch that that video it's full of a lot of information about how she layers as a police officer and how she recommends civilians layer too So we're talking about layering with a stun device, which is a pain compliant device. And 95% of the time, that is used as a deterrent. If you set that off, you will get rid of stray dogs and stray people that you do not want to have around you. A pepper spray allows you to keep the distance from an attacker. So if you are more of a distance person and you feel like you need to have that with you, you have the ability far away to get somebody away from you. A stun device is used up close and can be used on a multiple times on somebody and they do hurt. They are made to get the muscles to release so that you can get away. 
And when you have a hand-to-hand -hand striking tool or a punch power amplifier, that gives you the ability for you to inflict pain to, for compliance so that you can get away and really is layering with your self-defense moves and your education. In my classes with self-defense, we talk about using something like a tactical pen, something like a coupaton, and then my newly released striking arrows that are now available that are very easy and light and can, easy to carry with you on a regular basis. And you need to make sure that if you don't have one already, having a 120 decibel body alarm, and I especially recommend these with the kids because kids need to be able to scream and they can't scream when they're scared. So they can pull the alarm and people will look and the assailant will go, oh no, I've been seen and they'll run away. Number four, not having a preset plan is number four for the mistakes. And what do I mean by a preset plan? You need to establish a plan with your family, for your house, and for your friends. So with your family, you choose a code word in case of an emergency. You make sure your kids know how important phone numbers are so they can contact people if they need to, especially 911. So many things that I've seen on videos and experiences of children saving their family by calling 911 at any age and being able to articulate the address that they're at and their name and their family's name so that 911 can help them. Take photos of your children, make sure they're up to date, make sure they show distinguishing features, birthmarks, things like that. Our phones hold everything. Make sure that you have those uploaded to a cloud somewhere so that if something happens to your phone, they can still be accessed. Teach your children what to do if they're approached by a stranger. This is so important. Uh, I actually have a line of 11 books written by a psychologist that are on warriordefenders.com. You can read those books with them and play the board game with them and teach them what to do in case they have that feeling and trust their intuition when they feel like they shouldn't be around somebody or they had something happen to you. Keep that line of communication open, and we're going to go over that more on Friday. In your home, make sure that everybody knows not to open the doors to strangers, unexpected guests. With the ring cameras out there, we should be able to identify everybody before we open. And if it is somebody from a company, make sure they have verified identification. Have a plan to do if somebody enters your home. Where do you go? What do you do? Tell your children what they need to do if somebody enters the home. The best thing you can do is make sure that you, you get into a safe location. I do teach a home invasion uh, workshop on this, and that goes into detail on a safety plan, especially for a home invasion. Keep all your doors and windows locked when they're not in use. I know it's pretty outside, but leaving your windows open at night if you're on a first floor, it's probably not the best thing that you can do, so be sure you secure your home at all times. And establish a safe spot for your family to meet in case of an emergency. So, for example, if they have to leave the house or something's going on and they need to go to a safe spot, and establish one for your car as well. If something happens to you in public, let your children and you and everybody in your family know where you'll be if something happens. I recommend that if at all possible, especially when you're driving and you feel like you're being followed, go directly to a police station, fire station, and get on the phone with 911 so that they know where you're going and that you feel you're being followed. Please don't be embarrassed that you're making that call. It's better to be prepared than scared and you're not being paranoid. So with your friends, when you go out together, make sure you all go home together. And we talked about this last week for spring break safety. It is so important to have a buddy system every day, not just when you're on vacation. Pick a designated driver for the night. Don't let anyone leave the group with people they don't know. It's so important for your friends. That is a safety plan that needs to be established. Watch each other's belongings and drinks. So important. Do not let anybody else be a victim, especially when you're together with friends. Having a signal when you need intervention. We talked about that last week. Make sure that you are able to text your friend and say, Uncle Bob just texted me. I got to go. We need to get out of here. And that's your code word. Number five, as being one of the top ten mistakes, is not being aware of your surroundings 
and practicing situational awareness. You can, I will say this over and over again. The fight starts when you have been targeted, not when you've been touched. Being aware of your surroundings helps you in, be involved in the moment, identify your, your exits, watching people without staring at them. You don't want to start a fight. You just want to glance, identify they're wearing a hat, identify what color shirt they're having on, and noticeable verbal, nonverbal cues, like are they being nervous, are they looking around, where are their hands, very important. Limit your distractions, that means your phone, do not be looking on your phone, I just dropped a video on my YouTube channel this week, and about not looking on your phone while you're in public, make sure you're in a safe location before you take a phone call, and do not text while you're walking, trust your gut feeling, Walk with confidence. If you feel like there's something wrong, don't go that way. If you feel like you need to turn around, go back into the store because something's going on near your vehicle, don't go to your vehicle. Trust your instincts. Don't be embarrassed and walk with confidence. Situational awareness involves all of this and much more. Number six, not learning how to overcome your freeze response. And this is something else. The symptoms of a freeze response is not being able to think, suddenly feeling exhausted, your body's heavy, can't make decisions, can't move, have no emotions, feel blank. This is a camouflage response and it may happen when you find that you can't respond in any way to a threat. You can't run away or fight back, you're frozen in fear. In order to overcome that, taking deep breaths and yelling when you're being attacked helps you overcome that. Practicing awareness for your surroundings helps quite a bit in a freeze response. Verbal self-affirmations such as I am safe, thinking calmly, and moving to a safe place when you trust in your instincts. Well, number seven, assuming an area is safe because nothing bad's ever happened there. Guys, you might live in a good subdivision, but you don't want to be the first victim in that subdivision. Learning to letting your guard down makes you an easier target. Never assume an area is safe. And an area that you may trust might not always be trustworthy people. We have people watching our subdivisions, so make sure that you stay safe in those homes, even in your own driveway. Be aware of your surroundings. Believing safety misconceptions is number eight. The misconceptions of safety. Pretending to be on your phone. No, that's not a safety thing. Not making eye contact with others. No, you need to make eye contact with everybody just to make sure you know how to identify them and watch their body language. Using your cars as a self-defense tool. Your keys as a self-defense tool. Your car keys are going to do more damage to your hand than they will to the attacker. The videos that I have on somebody who had almost lost all three of her fingers and severed all her nerves, I talk about it in all my classes. Please do not put the keys in your hand. The striking arrow that I have on warriordefenders.com, that is designed not to hurt your hand and still make the same impact as a key in a safe way. Looking around, make sure that you are aware of your environment for situational awareness. Eye contact, let somebody know you're aware that they're there. Confidence and assertive, strong eye contact makes the attacker know you're not going to be intimidated. So don't stare people down all the time, but if somebody feels like they're staring you down, you make sure you know exactly what they're wearing. Um, when you're caught off guard, it's easier for an attacker to overcome you. So talking on your cell phone makes you an easy target. Only be on your phone to call for help or notify somebody in your location. And always let people know, hey, I have to get to a safe location. I'll finish this call in just a minute. Put your back up against a wall. Be safe in public. Number nine. Number one mistake is not staging your personal protection throughout your house. We have to secure our home. There are plenty of courses out there to teach you how to secure your home, but you want to have a staged weapon of some sort or improvised weapons are all over your home, such as a chair, a pot, a spoon, um, a flower pot full of dirt that you can throw at somebody if somebody comes into the house. So be aware of all your improvised weapons. Be aware of something that is next to you at all times. Make sure that your children know where there's a safety room that has a phone that can call 911 and some type of improvised weapon in that room. That way, no matter where you are in your house, you will be able to have a safety plan in place. 
put alarms on your windows and doors. I have quite a few of them on my website that you can check out that are inexpensive, easy to install, and really help you know what's going on in your home. They're also good for children who try to sneak out. Sorry, kids. But you can put those under doors as well. Keep your valuables in a diverse keep safe. So you don't always want to have to keep your valuables in a safe. Keep them diverse through the house to make sure they're not easily found in case of somebody breaking in. Number 10, not communicating with those you trust. That you need to do. I know we talked about this before, but I will harp on it. Let people know where you are, who you're going with, and when you'll be back. There are many apps out there that you can download to your phone, and I know a lot of people don't want to be tracked, but this is so people know that you're arriving safely. Tell someone the route you're taking. Let them know if your plans are changing. It's okay to let people know that you maybe had to take what I-85 was down and you had to take another road to get somewhere. That way they can start, if something happens to you, they can start looking for you. And on my YouTube channel at Warrior Defenders, I do have an app that's free to download and it shows you how it works. And you can download that to your phone and it is a safety alarm. So if you feel like you're in a bad location or you need help, it'll send an automatic GPS location to up to five people on your safety list and it will not be able to be turned off until you turn it off with your PIN code. And that to me, that GPS location Google can be sent to the police department. It's a great app that you can check out. Let somebody know if you're feeling unsafe. If you're driving and somebody is behind you and you feel like you're being followed, be sure that you tell them I feel like I'm being followed. I'm going to call 911. So we want to make sure that these top 10 safety mistakes are not being made with you. And, of course, if you have any questions about any of these items um, or ideas about the top 10 safety mistakes, you're welcome to reach out to me at warriordefenders.com. But I want to review them. So number one, not to do. These are not to do, and these are the 10 safety mistakes not setting verbal boundaries and feeling embarrassed about screaming about being loud. Never feel embarrassed. Number two, keeping your personal protection with you at all times. Don't tell a bad guy, sorry, my pepper spray's in the bottom of my purse. I want to make sure I get that habit in your hand at all times, whatever it is. And, of course, with firearms, you can't have those in your hands at all times, so that's why it's so important to layer your protection, which is number three. You need to layer your protection. Make sure that you have multiple things throughout your person in your car. And, oh, number one, guys, uh, please do not leave your pepper sprays in the vehicles. They can implode in the summer heat here, and they also lose their effectiveness when they're kept in your car. Number four, not having a preset plan. Make sure you have a plan in your family in your home, and with your friends. And if any of those you need help with, I am here to help. I do a home invasion a cons consultation and safety plans with families so that we can always talk about what is best for your circumstances, where you live, what you do for your job, and we can talk about that if you email me at warriordefenders.com. Number five, not being aware of your surroundings. Guys, please be aware of your surroundings. I will harp on this forever. Practice situational awareness can save you. Don't be afraid that you think you're being paranoid. Be prepared. Always try number six to overcome your freeze response. A lot of the times we need to make sure that we train through that stress. Make sh and we do address this in my classes as well. Number seven, assuming your area is safe because nothing's ever happened there. You do not want to be the first person for something to happen to. Believing in misconceptions is number eight. Make sure that you don't be, don't be on your phone. Don't believe that not making eye contact keeps you safe. Those are the myths. And using your car, your car keys as a self-defense. Number nine, not staging your protection in your home. I can't help you with this, but always be sure to be alert of your improvised weapons. Forks are good, too, just so you know. And uh, number ten, not communicating with others that you trust. Make sure that you communicate with others 
every time something changes. Download an app for safety. Stay in touch with your friends and family so that they know that you're safe, you're arriving where you're going, and we never want anything to happen to anybody out there. And always stay tuned to WQEE, the key on 99.1 FM, for next week's topics on Empower Strike Back. If you'd like to follow my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram, it's warriordefenders.com. All the links are there. I'm available for inspirational speaking as well and always available for workshops and seminars. See you next time on Empower Strike Back. Be safe.